I wanted optimal, and optimal for me in the backcountry was feeling just like I feel at home. No calorie deficit, no volatile energy level, no stomach issues. I did find a solution to get there. I struggled with diet in the backcountry for close to a decade. Combined with sleep, it was one of my biggest challenges while outfitting and guiding in the wilderness. 90% or more of folks truly pushing themselves in the backcountry, we're talking long duration backpackers, climbers, backpack hunters, multi-day rafters, guides, all of those folks, their effectiveness on the physical and mental front is hindered by their diet. Some folks acknowledge it, other guys just go through seasons not realizing how suboptimal they are running. Generally for folks that are spending more than a handful of days in remote areas, it becomes a major issue. If you watch different backcountry personalities, you will see the seasonal differential in their body weight, facial features, muscle mass. Even amongst professionals, few get a handle on this. But here's the deal. In this video, I'm going to explain the system that finally solved my issues. It works for me, and it's an approach that anyone can use. I'll talk a lot about this diet system in the context of my personal diet, you know, keto, carnivore, paleo, whatever you want to call it, but it really doesn't matter. This setup will work for anyone. High carb, carnivore, keto, low pre protein, high protein, you know, God forbid you're vegetarian or vegan, it's still going to work for you. As I explain my older video, video titled Why Backcountry Hunters Quit, if you control your diet while you're on remote trips, you end up being able to control your stress hormones and your energy level. You don't have to change from a high energy individual into a low energy stress ball when you're in the backcountry. If you have no clue who I am, I don't blame you at all. My name is Cliff Gray. I spent the past decade outfitting in some of the most remote wilderness in North America. I've dealt with over a thousand clients in that context. My insights and strategies in these videos are just based on that data set and experience. All I hope is that you guys get some value from them. If you like my videos, please subscribe to the channel here and get on my newsletter at pursuitwithcliff.com. I classify every adventurer into one of the three stages when it comes to their backcountry diet. For each stage, there are simple things you can do to jump up to the next more optimal phase. As I describe these stages, if you feel like you have been able to jump from one stage to the next and you're doing something that I don't cover, please leave it in the comments so everybody can check it out. So guys, first, stage one. This is a stage where you struggle to consume the same number of calories that you eat at home when you're in the backcountry. The biggest symptom in this stage is mental weakness and not feeling oneself. That's pretty much how I describe it. It's really clear. 40 to 50% of my past clients on the more strenuous trips fell into this category. Most people are burning 25% more calories at a minimum versus what they burn at home. So if you are also eating say 10 to 30% less calories per day when you're in the backcountry versus at home, you're actually running a calorie deficit that's gonna result in a half to a whole pound of weight loss a day. My rule of thumb for knowing if somebody is operating this suboptimal first phase, regardless of their experience, is how much body weight they're losing. If they're losing more than 2% of their body weight for each week in the field, you know, we're talking three pounds for a 180 pound guy, then they're in this phase. So why do a big chunk of backcountry hunters and other adventurers fall into this level of calorie deficit. First, there's a loss of appetite due to stress, fatigue, and altitude. You can check out my altitude video for more details, but altitude takes almost all the appetite from some folks, and at least during acclimation, it reduces your appetite for the majority of folks. The second just simple explanation is there's a lot going on on these trips. There's always chores, there's camp stuff, there's gear to be adjusted, there's plans to be made for the next day. So days really fly by, and so can the moments to sit down and consume calories. You just let it pass by. The third reason a lot of folks end up in this first stage and end up with this big calorie deficit is just a lack of discipline around planning and preparation, or they're just overlooking it. I talk about this in my recent video on what the biggest things unprepared backcountry hunters can do last minute. I talk about meal planning. 
If you lack meal planning, you're most likely gonna end up in the stage one and you're gonna have all the accompanying issues I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. All right, so what's the big deal? I can gain the weight back or hell, I'm fat. I'll just burn some of it off during my trip. The concept of losing weight on a trip is dumb and it's a recipe for failure. If you get one thing from this video, realize that's idiotic. If you go into a hunt or a backcountry trip fat, you wanna stay fat during your hunt, and here's why. A multitude of studies have shown that calorie deficit dieting causes rises in the stress hormone cortisol. And there's clear symptoms from that. Headaches, insomnia, tense muscles, anxiety, mood swings, a bunch of stuff you don't wanna deal with in the backcountry, and a bunch of stuff that's gonna affect your effectiveness. There's actually a study that mimics what a lot of folks are doing when they're in this phase on backcountry hunts and adventures. The study restricted a group of men on an intense exercise routine to only 1,800 calories a day. So they're probably running a 1,200 to 1,800 calorie deficit, okay? Tons of backcountry hunters, climbers, and backpackers will do this exact thing, and really with roughly those exact numbers. They're gonna be running, you know, 1,200 to 1,800 calories low each day. Well, after just five days on this study, testosterone levels dropped 40 to 50% across the group. I'm sure other hormones dropped also, but they were just measuring testosterone in that study. Okay, so some common symptoms of lower testosterone. Let's go over those. Poor memory, symptoms of depression, low energy level, low endurance, low physical strength, difficulty finding words to say, okay? That's literally a symptom in the medical literature, okay? To me, that comes across as just reduced quick judgment, right? Something you need on backcountry trips. So to sum up the academic literature on this front, if you get in a deep calorie deficit, you know, and you have the results of undesirable hormones spiking and drops in desirable ones, the result is you are more likely to bitch out when it gets tough in the wilderness, okay? That's what the academic literature is basically saying, and that's exactly what I've seen over the years of guiding and outfitting in the wilderness. If you run a deep calorie deficit for multiple days, you are going to have the mindset of a freaking weenie. The good thing about stage one is it's easy to get out of. It's just all about preparation and discipline. One, just plan your meals. Package daily meals with X amount of calories. I have an older video that goes through this. You can check it out. And you can also subscribe to the channel because here in the next couple days, I'm gonna have an updated video that goes over my meals for a seven day trip I just got back from. That new video is gonna cover this from the perspective of a carnivore, paleo, keto type of diet, but that earlier, earlier video covers this meal packaging concept from a more traditional kind of carb heavy back dehydrated backpacking food context all right so you can check out either one of those videos and see how i package my meals and do the preparation for each day okay and have specific calories dedicated to each day of my trip the second thing to do is test foods at home so you want to eat them in the field. Basically what we're doing here is short circuiting your lack of appetite with taste, right? Just things you like. This does work to some extent. It's not a cure all, but it does work if you have foods with you that you actually enjoy. And the third thing that's going to take you out of this stage into stage two is camp discipline. Look at your meal bag for the day when the sun goes down. If it's still full, get to eating and adjust the next day to even out the calorie consumption throughout the day. That's really just a follow on on preparation, right? You have your meal bag with the calories, make sure that you eat it, and if you don't, at night, catch up. That's not ideal because if you eat a lot during, right before you go to bed, it might affect your sleep, but it's better than running that calorie deficit. Recognizing the implications of the calorie deficit that's clear in the stage one type of diet for backcountry trips is the first thing you need to do. And then with a little bit of plan and execution, most, most folks can jump right through that stage into stage two. It might take a little exposure therapy, a little bit of seeing what happens when you get run down on a calorie deficit, but you will quickly end up in stage two. So. What is stage two? 
So stage two of diet in the backcountry is when you're consuming 20 to 25% more than your normal at-home calorie intake, all right? And this is making up for the increased activity that's going on with the adventure you're taking part of. You don't run at a steep calorie deficit and you're losing hardly any weight. You know, maybe on a five to seven day hunt or backcountry trip, you're losing one to two pounds. 30 to 40% of folks are in this stage and most of these folks are quite experienced in the field. What I've seen with clients is if they're an athlete or they're folks with really high activity levels at home, like extreme levels in their daily existence, these folks will avoid stage one that I just, just discussed and they'll end up right here in stage two right off the bat. Of all the years I guided in the mountains and wilderness, I spent the majority of my time in this stage. You avoid the stress and hormonal roller coaster that comes with a calorie deficit, but you have two new things to deal with in this stage. Those two issues are stomach problems and low energy. So stomach issues. I grew up in a livestock oriented family. We always had horses, cattle, sheep, some sort of livestock. What you learn early on in that environment is that if you want major problems, make an abrupt change to an animal's diet. The fact is that humans are no different, yet that's exactly what we are doing when we go on these backpacking hunts or remote trips in the wilderness. We abruptly change our diet. So why the change? All right, so regardless of your day-to-day non-backcountry diet, there are limited options out there for backcountry food. It seems like every day there are more dehydrated meal options. If there's one that works great for you, make a comment below. I don't keep track of all the options out there, okay? But I am gonna make a generalization here that seems to still hold true. At the time of filming this video, the readily available stuff, you know, the dehydrated, dehydrated meals with all the distribution, the mountain houses and their competitors, all of those companies are still essentially using the same process and trying to solve the same issues. They want broad appeal on taste, longevity of the meal, low weight per calorie, and they want cost effectiveness. All of this results in essentially the same type of meal. High carbs, high sodium, and high ingredients that I can't even pronounce. If you look at the composition of these backcountry meals, they are way off of anyone's normal diet. I'll get into this more later on in the video, but almost no one's macronutrient profile, like their day-to-day -day macronutrients, resembles what's provided in these meals. And there's very little flexibility with these meals to adjust that profile. You basically got what you got, right? The result of all of this is stomach issues. I don't know a single long duration backpacking guide that doesn't have gastrointestinal issues after eating dehydrated meals beyond day five or six. These meals are so different than my personal normal diet I tend to start having minor issues with my stomach on day two or three, you know, really almost immediately. Being knowledgeable enough to avoid dropping back to stage one, you know, getting back into a calorie deficit, most stage two outdoorsmen will start eating whatever appeals to them when this dehydrated food starts bothering in their stomach. So we're talking snicker bars, honey stingers, dried food, dried fruit, excuse me, all sorts of other packaged sugar and carbs. This is generally where I went in a lot of my guiding. And the shift we make to avoid those stomach issues but also keep the calorie intake up gets us to the energy problem. Your blood sugar just boils all over the place. You can, it's obvious, you know, it's obvious when you're guiding guys and it's obvious in yourself if you're looking for your mood, your mood swings, your energy swings, and energy is highly dependent on the availability of caffeine and sugar. You become just you know, intermittently just addicted to it. You can feel like you're going to bonk and then you eat some sugar and you're good in 10 minutes. Like I said, I guided a ton in the mountains, essentially falling back to this. This is standard practice among a lot of folks. So if you're doing this, don't feel weird. You can get through hunts or other backcountry trips in decent shape by falling into this and keeping your calories up, but just riding that energy roller coaster. But here's the deal, I wanted optimal, and optimal for me in the backcountry setting was feeling just like I feel at home. Even having to have sugar or carbs to avoid the bonk, to me that was suboptimal when I was in the backcountry. I wanted to run with no calorie deficit, no volatile energy level, no stomach issues, and so if you get to that stage, I call that stage three. I went through a lot of trial and error 
but I did find a solution to get there, guys. What I found has about 50 different explanations of why it works. The academic literature seems like all over the place, so I have no clue why it does work. It may be one of those explanations they give in, in scientific papers, it may not be, but it does work for me time and time again. My suspicion is that it works because you end up eating more similar foods to what you are used to and you match the type of nutrients your body has adapted to burning for energy in your day-to-day -day life. So let's get into stage three. The first thing to do in this stage is exactly what we did to get to stage two, and that's match your calorie burn to calorie intake. So don't run a calorie deficit, okay? Don't decide to fast on your trip in the backcountry, all right? But the key to this stage is matching your macronutrient profile to what you eat at home. Macronutrients means fats, proteins, carbs. Just take your diet and that's the simple pie chart, okay? Now don't be intimidated by this. It's freaking easy, guys. Get a fitness app. I use MyFitnessPal, but it doesn't really matter. There's a bunch of free ones out there and they all do a pretty good job from what I've seen. Put in all the foods you eat for a day or two. If you have a fairly strict diet, one day will probably do it for you. If your diet varies a lot, do this for two or three days. Just put all your, feet, your food in there and take you 10 minutes a day to do that. The app is gonna spit out a nutrient profile, right? Fats, protein, carbs, split up, you know, your whole calories into a pie chart. Most folks out there are gonna have a fairly carb generic split of roughly like 20, 20% fat, 60% carbs, 20% protein. If you are in a carb burning profile like many people, check out my old backpack video that I mentioned before. That's essentially the types of foods that you're gonna use, all right, to get to that profile. That setup in that video is gonna match that standard carb heavy profile. It does utilize dehydrated backpacking meals in the mix, but over 50% of the calories are from other sources so I could match my normal diet as much as possible. If you are on a carnivore or keto diet, you're gonna have a split that's more like 70% fat, 10% carbs, 20% protein, thereabouts. Like I said before, subscribe to the channel, just come back and look in three, four days. I have a backcountry setup video on meal planning that focus on, focuses on that type of diet and the type of foods that I use in order to get that type of macronutrient profile. I have also been doing a bunch of videos on making your own backcountry foods that fit into this diet. I've got a pemmican video out there, I've got a ganache video coming out soon that fits in that profile, and I have a smoked cheese video. They're gonna be short ones, they'll be out soon. The point is, you now have a rough framework for planning the substance of your meals. Plan your meals where your total pie chart on this macronutrient deal, fats, proteins, carbs, is close to your at-home macronutrient split. The wild thing that I can note from experience on this is that it works for both ends of the spectrum. I've done high carb in the past and I've done high fat protein recently. As long as you match the macronutrient profile to what you have been eating recently at home to what you are taking in the backcountry, you are going to be feeling optimal in the field. The other thing you're gonna notice, and this is the source of a lot of the problems I've talked about, is the plan of a couple power bars and mountain house diet that some folks half-ass put together is way off of anyone's nutrient profile. I believe that's why and the cause of so many stomach issues and any energy issues for people in the backcountry. Now, if you are on a high carb diet, you aren't gonna have much issue with hitting your nutrient profile within the bounds of weight for a backpack hunt or backpack trip, okay, when you need to keep things light. You can use dried fruit, nuts, dried meat, all that stuff, and you can integrate dehydrated meals like Mountain House that have been you know, optimized for weight. Now, if you are on a high fat diet, you're gonna have to make some of your own foods. I made three different things I mentioned before, but there's a lot of different options out there. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of weight conscious, high fat, high protein items. But what I found if you're making your own foods for backpacking trips and you know where, where weight, is, weight is an issue, you know, getting to the 100, 100 calories per ounce or more is pretty easy. But regardless, for that nutrient profile, the keto, paleo, high fat one, you're probably gonna have to make some of your own foods. I'm gonna be honest with you, the one thing this video lacks is an explanation of why it works. And 
I honestly think that the whole nutrition world out there probably can't explain it right now, but I can tell you it works, okay? If you want to feel exactly like you feel at home in terms of your digestion and energy level, all you have to do is don't run a calorie deficit, don't you know, don't think that it's a time to fast or a time to lose weight. Like I said before, that's dumb. I've seen the results of people getting into that stage on these trips. It doesn't work. Do not run a calorie deficit, okay? That in itself will bump you up above, you know, 40, 50% of outdoor, event outdoor adventurers in terms of just optimizing your diet, okay? So now you're above average if all you do is match calories. Now, if you want to get in the top 5 10% of people who just run super optimal in terms of their diet, digestion, and energy level, take those calories that don't run you at a deficit and split them up and choose foods that make it so you match the macro nutrients that you run at home, okay? And the part of the nature of that is the food is going to end up being a little bit similar, but there's going to be, you're also going to be consuming the same level of fats or same level of fats or same level of carbs that you're used to. And that, for whatever reason, I don't know the explanation. And believe me, I've read a lot about it. It doesn't seem to me that there's a clear explanation, honestly, why there's a lot of debate. But if you match that profile, the profile of when you're at home, to when you're in the field, your results are going to be way better. You guys try it and tell me if you get different results, but I bet you're gonna be amazed at how much better you feel, particularly if you struggled with this like I have for most of my years out in the backcountry. Guys, I hope it was a big help. If anybody out there has input, all you viewers have great things to say, please leave in the comments. Like I said before, I've got a, I've got a few more food-related videos coming out here within a week, so please stay tuned, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel and like this video. Thanks, guys.